uh, one of the most impressive demonstrations of the power of a test and treat protocol is at a clinic in London um, called the Dean Street Clinic. I've heard of this, uh, yeah. Yeah, and they, they're in the theater district in, uh, in, in Soho, uh, not far from the Broad Street Pump. I don't know if you learned about the Broad Street yeah, Pump. Yeah, that was the cholera uh, yeah, uh, epidemiology. Just yeah. walking distance to the Broad Street Pump. Um, and it's, uh, but this clinic is very active. They, they uh, deal mostly with gay men uh, and they, um, uh, they do, uh, they have a walk-in clinic where pa it's a very comfortable setting where patients fill out a history, uh, self-collect uh, specimens, and then they get uh, the assay started on a big infinity system sitting there in the clinic, which they're watching run while, they, uh, while they're there. And uh, they can either wait for the result or they can go back out in the street, have coffee, and they get a text saying, hey, you need to come back uh. or you're good to go. And this means a lot to them. Wow. It also is very important for interrupting the chain of transmission to get those results quickly and the patients treated quickly, especially now in the age of PrEP. Uh, the the pre-exposure prophylaxis pre for HIV, yes. Yeah, where, they, where they need to be tested frequently for both um, HIV and, uh, and CTNG, um, and, uh, Chlamydia gonorrhea, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. chlamydia gonorrhea. So, uh, this is really important stuff because it's, it's, it's critical in, in reducing, um, transmission pressure, uh, within the population to avoid that window of uncertainty about not having a result, uh, where there could be transmission opportunities closing the gap between getting the result and getting treated. And even, even in partner uh, notifications, uh, it makes sense to have, uh, to put testing in place there because not all the partners are gonna be positive. Right, uh, and right. it would be nice to know Before you on treat. the basis of a definitive result whether you need to treat or not. Okay, here's a crazy question. Uh, I see the need for this in another community that's could desperately use it for quick, accurate STI uh, testing, and that is the adult uh, film community. Uh, it have, have you guys explored that as a potential? We have not, but <laughs> we've heard the same, the same concern, that actually there would be value, I would think, in testing and treating quickly, given the frequency of exposure mm. of this crowd, that it would make sense to be able to try to block transmission uh, in that setting as well. And, and all joking aside, this is a crowd that is not using, you know, condoms and, and right. safe sex. Yeah. And so as a result, they are actually at high risk. And there's been some I events yeah. where people have been infected. So yeah. th this, this again, I, I think this, to see this, tr did you ever think it would get to this stage? Um, you know, we, we only hoped a few years mm. ago that it would get to this point of being able to really drive actionable results uh, that could lead to, to, uh, to decisions that are, that are that are um, specific for the condition uh, that is found uh, at the point of care. And this uh, is, you know, it's becoming reality. So, so get it right the first time, right there at the point of care where you can actually make the decision the patient's still there. Yep. Yeah, see that, 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 that to me is the compelling, most compelling case for that. Yeah. One thing, pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV prep. Now, my, I had my brother-in-law on the show, he's an ID doc in Michigan, yep. this is one of his passions. Uh, you know, what's your thinking on this, the new drugs coming out, and how does it relate to uh, the testing that you're doing? Right, so um, clearly there's a need for frequent um, uh, testing for chlamydia and gonorrhea. There's also a need for um, hepatitis C testing because that's one of the infections that's on the rise. So in other words, in people, pe people who are on the PrEP regimen thinking, that, okay, maybe I'm okay about HIV, a little more protected, yeah. they can still get gonorrhea, chlamydia, HCV. Yep, And exactly. we need to test, yeah. Yep. In addition, there's a compelling need for better, faster uh, HIV diagnostics. Number one, to qualify a patient for PrEP. They can't be infected when they start PrEP. Mm. And you don't want to wait for that result because when you decide to put them on PrEP based on a negative result, it may be 10 days out, they could have gotten yeah, HIV exposed. in the meantime. And I've heard, I've heard actual stories about patients who become positive in between the first blood draw for HIV diagnosis yeah. and then getting the first um, administration of PrEP. 
And that's not a good thing because the virus becomes resistant in that context. Time is virus in yeah. this case. So having, yeah. uh, having the capability of doing a same day test and treat protocol for HIV, for, for PrEP qualification would be a game changer. And uh, likewise, monitoring them frequently for infection once PrEP is initiated, because you can still get breakthrough events that happen because of non-compliance or other reasons. So it sounds like, and, and here's a question that my audience is going to wonder, how do we start to access some of this testing? Because maybe they're working in a small clinic, maybe they're working in a hospital, maybe they're lab, there are a lot of lab people that follow the show. Right. Because we did this one rap called In the Lab, mm -hmm. and uh, they yeah. were like, someone made us a rap. That's a strange thing and wonderful, uh, because we deeply appreciate our, our lab. Um, how, how can they start to learn more and, and, and get more uh, uh, advocacy going for this sort of testing? Flu RSV testing was never something that was very popular in the reference lab, because it just took too long. Even if it takes a day or two uh, to get results back, that's too late. So labs realize that to be able to provide the best information for their clinicians, they need to provide rapid turnaround testing for, uh, for that uh, application. Uh, but I think increasingly they're getting aware of the fact that there's, this applies to many things across the board just out, outside of flu. Mm -hmm. um, for STI testing, chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomonas, um, as well as other viral infections that need to be detected more early. Mm. So this is science in action, helping humans in need. That's what we want to see in this world. That's why we're so tireless in advocating for scientists like yourself and mm -hmm. organizations that are working on this, and why we will never stop fighting people who deny the science. <laughs> We will be mean to them because <laughs> we like to, and also we will listen and we will educate and we will move hearts and minds. Dr. Dave Persing, it has been such a pleasure having you on the show. It's an honor to be with someone who took medicine, science, and passion for humans and combined it and actually made a difference in the world. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, it's my pleasure.